Wow. Good evening. I'm Glenda Carlin, and it is November 5th, 2024. This is my weekly Tuesday night Zoom virtual A Course in Miracles and Zochen um, meeting. Welcome, welcome. And for those that can't come out live, I record this and put it on YouTube. Then you can look at it again for those that come here live or those that don't, they can see it later. Um, okay, oh, so first thing we invite in, Holy Spirit, Jesus, Buddha. And you know, when I say these words, you know, Holy Spirit is a clear form. But Jesus, that Glenda Green got a vision of what Jesus looked like. So I have a painting of that. So I picture Jesus like that. Then Buddha, a picture of Buddha. See, I look at them. I know they're not that body, but I'm just calling them in. It's called deity yoga. Yoga means union. And we don't we don't simulate them in how they dress or et cetera, but we do we do learn to live by their virtu virtues, their attitudes, their 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 natural divinity. But anyway, and then there's other in Buddhism that's called deity yoga, and there's different deities people can imagine, and that helps them take on those properties because ego, as when we listen to ego, we don't take on the properties of joy, love, peace, trust you know, open-mindedness, generosity, all those virtues. But but yet we can think of these enlightened beings and, and visualize them with us and we take on their virtues because we want to, those are our virtues. But anyway, what I'm trying to explain is I just, I'm not just rattling this off when I, I visualize them. Now, the enlightened beings... There's different deities in, in, uh, in Buddhism that um, that are named like over here. This corner, this is called Chenrezig. Uh, Chinrez, Maybe I got that name incorrect, but it, it means enlightened being. And when I attend some of these Zoom retreats in the last five years, sometimes they'll say, picture a person that you really love and respect. And some people will pick Mother Teresa. Some will pick Mandala, you know, that South African leader that was 27 years in jail that practiced, practiced this loving kindness and came out and then was a, a, a loving leader. But anyway, you get the point. But they're all here now, but we've called them in, guide me what to do or say, help those that are here have insights that can help them along their path. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, the topic for tonight's teaching is, it's called Striking the Vital Point. And, and, why I incorporate Dzogchen and Buddhism with A Course of Miracles is because in different teachings from that Lama Surya Das and different enlightened beings, they have words and Buddha had words to describe what was going on here about ignorance. You know, we're ignorant of what we are. And, and Jesus would call that, we think we're a body. We don't realize, I'm not a body, I'm free from still as God created me, that we're this spirit, this clear light of spirit. But by having these uh, this other way of with words or terms to come in and look at Jesus as a course of miracles, I'm able to understand the course better, but also I get to understand what Jesus, the heck Jesus is talking about. <laughs> and these three vital points these three vital points, I'm in, admitting Dr. Liz Love. That's a neat name, isn't it? <laughs> Dr. Liz Love. And here's Julia. Julia Bradley DeBose is coming in. 
Yes. Let's see. We're all muted. Very good. Welcome, welcome, Dr. Liz Love and Julia. Julia, welcome, welcome. There's Chaz came in. Debbie Thomas came in a second ago. Welcome, welcome. Um, I'm talking about the topic of tonight's teaching where I incorporate A Course in Miracles and Dzogchen Buddhism is striking the vital point. And what is the vital point? There's three words or three practices that I realized Jesus is doing in the course that I didn't know he was doing. It's called view, meditation, and action. And, and those three are practices that Dzogchen does. And that's why I learned about those, but those words. And then I looked in the course and it helps me then uh, pinpoint what G clarifies what Jesus is talking about so I can get these teachings deeper, get an understanding of them. But anyway, striking the vital point means in a holy instant, we can strike our deluded mind with the three practices called view, meditation, and action to unveil our true nature. And what's our true Christ Buddha nature? This is this clear love light, this clear light, but it's soaked with love. And that's why I coined that word, clear love light. But what is what vital point do these three words strike? It strikes the point of our nature. That's what it strikes. To open us up to this divine Christ Buddha nature, to this clear light. But it's either one, either one or all three of these practices can do it. But called view, meditation, and action. They uproot our ignorance. And in my email, I had the words uh, where Jesus talks about it, ignorance. How we're ignorant. Let's see if I can find. I printed. I don't know if I printed all the... I won't stop and look for that, but... Jesus uses the word ignorance. And what are we ignorant about? We're ignorant about what we are, what our brothers are, and what God is. And what we are is this clear love light of spirit. There's really only God's presence. We're all in that. In, in, there is no division in that clear love light. We're all interbeing in that light. But anyway, so where in the course does Jesus talk about what this striking this vital point, you know, these, these vital points and the view, the view, this is in workbook lesson 124. What the view means, what the view, there's view, meditation, and action. The view is cultivated by the th this visualization or seeing this spaciousness that's here now in front of your face. It's here now, this clear light of spaciousness. That's the view. That's what we see with this single eye, with this Christ vision. That's the view. But how do you cultivate that view? That comes about through meditation and action. And the meditation, that's talking about in Lesson 124. And I was going to look up, I did, a, I did a document one time where I searched, where Jesus only uses the word meditation twice in the course, but instead he uses about eight different other words like rest, <laughs> rest, free your mind. He uses eight different words, uh, which describe meditation. And I'm going to say that I didn't recognize his workbook lessons were always talking about meditation. And I didn't get it till I went to Zochen, and they meditate every day. And then when I researched those eight, or I apologize that I didn't look that up, those eight or 10 words Jesus uses, he'll say to rest or be 
a minute. Then he says three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes. Then he says 15 minutes, then 30 minutes. And I forget, I think one place he says an hour. And another place he says, once you start doing this, you don't want to leave being in meditation with God. Meaning you're aware of your union with uh, God's clear light presence that's here now. But anyway, I digress. The three vital points. What vital point do these three words strike? That's important for us to clarify. It strikes, picture if you had a jewel and the jeweler is trying to tap, tap it to get its perfect facets. He's tapping it and to get that perfect nature or look, we can do it with view, meditation, or action, but he's trying, Jesus is trying to get us to unveil our true nature, our Christ Buddha nature, but it's been diluted with thoughts, feelings, and concepts, judgments of our brothers, thoughts of separation. Okay, so here's this lesson 124. Peace be to you today. Secure your peace by practicing awareness you are one with your creator as he is with you. Sometime today, whenever it seems best, devote half an hour to the thought that you are one with God. This is our first attempt at extended period for which we give no rules nor special words to guide your meditation. We will, tr we will trust God's voice, Holy Spirit, to speak as he sees fit today, certain he will not fail. Abide with him, that means Holy Spirit, this half hour, he will do the rest. Then look at this sentence. Your benefit will not be less if you believe that nothing happens. Now, I find that fascinating because in the beginning when I started to meditate every day about four years ago, I didn't get, under, get I didn't get it. Uh, before I learned Dzogchen, sky gazing, space swinging meditation, I was trying to repress thoughts. We'll never repress thoughts. That's not the purpose of meditation. Meditation, as Jesus describes and Dzogchen describes, we let thoughts and feelings come and go on this clear light mind, God mind. There's only one mind, and that's our Christ Buddha, God mind. We're letting thoughts and feelings come and go. But it takes a while to be able to let thoughts and feelings come and go without attachment and aversion, meaning clinging to, we think of a grocery list and we're off at the grocery store. We go to the, when in meditation, we just simply bring our attention back to this vertical axis point, this still center that's behind the forehead and, and be there. And before you know if the mind's wandered off again. Without meditation, you aren't aware of how much the mind is wandering. And like Jesus says, you're, you're too tolerant of mind wandering, Jesus tells us. Well, without meditation, you can't be aware of what the mind's doing to be able to master it and let these thoughts and feelings come and go, where you can then strike the vital point and zing right in and open up to this pure, clear light of your nature. In meditation... As you learn to look in your mind for this spaciousness, this clear moonlight, then it, you build a spiritual muscle and you, you catch your mind when it wanders off and you come back. But what Jesus says here, you'll benefit, you'll benefit will not be less if you believe nothing's happening. So even though you're meditating and you think, oh, this is getting worse, I'm aware there's more thoughts now. Well, that's what happens. Before meditation, we're not aware how the mind is just running crazy. It's just chattering. But with meditation, you start to see what the mind's doing, and you actually think you're doing wrong. You actually think things are getting worse. But they're not worse. You're just aware of what the mind's doing. It's always been doing that. But as you relax and you bring your attention back to that vertical axis, the great ray, column of the light, and rest there, and then the mind will wander again. You build this spiritual muscle, and it's called meditation. And then you're able to, off the meditation cushion, walk around your house, your grocery store, wherever you want to go, 
and you're not diverted by these thoughts and feelings, you've leaned back into this Christ nature, your clear light nature, and you can respond accordingly. You're not reacting like we used to react, knee-jerk reacting. So the benefit of meditating is then when you're off the cushion, you're aware of what's going on and you're not reacting like you did. It, but it takes time. It takes time and you're learning the nature of your mind. And once in a while, you'll, it'll, you'll get a vital, you'll strike the what vital point do these words strike? That vital point that struck in a second is this hard shell of ego is struck, broke open, and you feel and glimpse peace, love, joy of your true Buddha, Christ, God, nature. And that glimpse gets more and more and more as you meditate and do the action and view, practice these ways. But anyway, I'm going to go back to reading here. Yet you may not be ready to accept the gain today, yet sometime, somewhere, it will come to you, nor will you fail to recognize it when it dawns with certainty upon your mind. This half hour will be framed in gold, with every minute like a diamond set around the mirror that this exercise will offer you, and you will see Christ's face upon it in reflection of your own. Perhaps today, perhaps tomorrow, you will see your own transfiguration in the glass this holy half an hour will hold out to you to look upon yourself. When you are ready, you will find it there within your mind and waiting to be found. That's striking the vital point, opening to your Christ Buddha nature. Don't you? And Jesus calls that the sinless light. That's clear light. That's in that workbook 124. Um, and so the, the view is also, you can call it like clear spaciousness. When you look out in your living room or wherever you're at, this space that seems to be here is clear light. God's presence is here, but we're just not aware of it. So you stop every once in a while and you're asking yourself, hey, am I dreaming? Is this a dream? And then you stop and you focus your attention beyond the form to the clear light of spirit. That's called Jesus's advanced forgiveness. You look beyond the body, beyond flesh to the clear light of spirit that's here. This spaciousness, uh, God's presence that's here now. But anyway, that's the view. That's the view. Uh, now action, what action means is practicing this Jesus's advanced forgiveness. And that is uh, the worst page two. Forgiveness is the great release from time. This is in text 26, section five, paragraph six. It is the key to learning that the past is over. Madness speaks no more. <laughs> Don't, madness is no more. In the extreme, the son of God can delude himself that this madness is true and pass from mere and then he passes when he believes it's true from, he, Jesus calls it from imagining to belief into madness, quite convinced that where he would prefer to be, prefer to be in the body, he is. That's chapter 26, section five, paragraph six. So action, what that means is, what are you actually practicing, integrating in your daily life? What action are you taking so that you can train your mind? Because Jesus calls A Course in Miracles a course in mind training. That we're too tolerant of this mind wandering. And the mind wandering refers to the six sense gates. Thinking's one of the senses. Sight, hearing, smell, feeling, touch. These are senses, stimuli through the body that they're just, they're just, I don't even know if it's hundreds in a, in a, in a minute. All this stimuli is occurring, but as we learn to stop and view, take, do this view of this spacious, clear light that's everywhere out in front of us, just stop and think that way and think about this dream is this dream about these images were real that are here. Now, we never put the body in harm's way. 
Oh, I teach the middle way. I visit the doctor when I need to. <laughs> I don't, I, I, I know the mind can heal the, the, the illusionary body, but I do the middle way. We do not put the body in harm's way. And we seek help, psychotherapy help if we need it, talk to family, friends, et cetera. But what is our action? Our action is to protect, practice this advanced forgiveness, which Jesus says is, look, you've got a choice. Do you see the flesh or do you see spirit? And spirit's clear and invisible. You can't see the clear light of spirit. So it's called faking it while you make it because you're practicing this. We've been visualizing we're a body for not just this life, for many lifetimes. So you're visualizing the truth. <laughs> you're visualizing the truth. You got to practice at it though. Here's what Jesus says. Forgiveness is the great release from time. It's the key to learning that the past is over. Madness speaks no more. That's just so beautiful. And then here is chapter seven. This talks about action and view. Um, come therefore unto me and learn of the truth in you. That's Jesus saying, come in unto me. Come unto Jesus means he says that throughout the course, reach and take my hand. The mind we share is shared by all our brothers. And somewhere I wanted to mention, I want to go back here a second. See, I, I do want to share my mind with you because we are of one mind and that mind is ours. See, only this mind everywhere because only this is everywhere and in everything. So what does a mind look like, you guys? He's asking, Jesus asks you, see only one mind. Well, how do you see a mind? It's clear. It's clear, this clear light clear spaciousness you know when when you meditate and you look in your mind it can look dark but if you press your eyelids there's like moonlight there but when the arc of light opens is released and then the great ray downloads then you get more light is seen inside your mind but that light's here only veiled obscured by these thoughts and feelings so jesus says I do want to share my mind with you because we are of one mind. And this is the big M mind. That means Christ mind, Buddha mind, God mind. And that mind is ours. See only this mind everywhere because only this is everywhere and in everything. It is everything because it encompasses all things within itself. Blessed are you who perceive only this because you perceive only what is true. So the action then is to see only this mind. And again, it's faking it while you make it because how do you see your mind? <laughs> but see what's happening is you're going from thinking you're a body to this Christ mind, this God. It's beautiful what Jesus is doing here. Just so methodic and beautiful. He's giving you this view, this view of how things are without calling it a view, calling it spiritual sight. But spiritual sight is also how we're thinking. Do we think like Holy Spirit who looks out and sees only himself everywhere, which is seen only purity and innocence. And purity and innocence is clear. You can't see it. It's this clear light again, right? So make your, you got your journal or something, make this list of all the things you are, which point towards your true nature of mind because you're taking this like a little hammer and tapping this vital point <laughs> to strike open your Christ nature to this clear light, open up to this clear light. It's just so beautiful. Uh, how methodic he is about all, all this. Uh... Now, here I'm going to add, I'm going to do a Dzogchen quote. This came from an enlightened being called D-I-L-G-O, Ken C-K-H-Y-E and T-S-E Rinpoche. And here's what he says. What are the three words? View, meditation, and action. What does it mean to strike the vital point 
with these words. Now see, you're striking. This vital point is this, your true nature. Is picture like it, maybe it's a nut or a jewel. Let's picture it's a jewel, like a diamond. But it's clouded. This diamond's encrusted with thoughts, obscurations, judgments that we're a separate body and that our brothers and sisters have done all these horrible things, et cetera, and we, that we don't forgive them for. Granted, of course, Jesus says, we're forgiving people for things they never did. But in duality, we think about there's two-ness and there's subject and object. So in what I do, if I had known better, I would have acted better. So I talk to myself and go, I forgive you, Glenda. You didn't know any better or you would have acted different. Forgive them. They didn't know any better or they would have acted different. And then knowing that none of this ever happened, but that's cleaning the unconscious mind out. You're, we're cleaning with advanced forgiveness, looking beyond the error to the clear light. Besides thinking about they've never really done anything. I'm going, you know, I'm going to overlook this. But yet if I'd known better, I would have done better. I forgive myself. I vowed to never do it again. But those those thoughts, feelings are clouds, darkness that obscure this diamond, this clear, pure diamond. <clears throat> but every time you have the view of this clear light that's here now, you can picture that's like a little hammer that taps on that dark darkness, that ball of darkness on that diamond that's hidden here in the middle. Tap, you go, because you're tapping, you're wanting to cut through that to that diamond that pure Buddha, pure Christ nature, that clear light to see it everywhere, your clear mind. Then with meditation, when you're meditating, tap again, you go, because you're removing these thoughts and judgments from your conscious mind and your unconscious mind. The unconscious egoic mind is ruling the show until we lean back with meditation and practicing these truths we, begun, we begin, begin to be aware of these thoughts and don't let them rule us. We choose again. We're sorting between true and false. And we see the truth. And we go, oh, no, I'm not believing that. Tap. I'm the. I'm a clear light spirit of God. I'm in Christ's presence, you know. Tap. You're hitting this dark darkness. It's covering up the diamond. And then with action, thinking of your brother as God. In Lesson 183, Jesus says, there's only God and call yourself by your real name, which is God. I mean, first you got to get to thinking you're, you're accepting you're a Christ, a son of God, a child of God, uh, you know, or even Buddha. But there's really only this clear light presence of God that's animating all these different bodies and images and beings. That's the clear presence, but that's the diamond that's, the, uh, uh, that's been that's obscured by all these thoughts feelings so tap we tap it by thinking of our brothers as god 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 i love you i love you i love you you know oh and to yourself god 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 i'm immortal spirit this body is a false image and has nothing to do with what i am tap 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 you're going that's a vital tap that could just bust open this darkness for the clear light God mind to be revealed to you. Oh, it's so beautiful. I never really got this. I never really got this. But it's view, meditation, and action. And really, there's a fourth one called fruit. The fruit, fruition of all this, is that you end up having this big view this big knowing of this clear light presence that's here. That's the fruition. It's just so beautiful. Oh, but I was going to finish reading this huge quote that caused me to think about this. Okay. What are the three words? View, meditation, and action. What does it mean to strike the vital point with these words? If one wants to kill a man and strikes his heart with a weapon, the man will not live another hour. He will die immediately. What vital point do these three words strike? 
Just as oil is present in a mustard seed, all of us, all sentient beings, have Buddha nature. And you can just put Christ nature there too. Though it is present, Buddha nature is present, we do not recognize it because our minds are obscured by delusions. Delusions means these false thoughts, these thoughts of separation. Duality, good and bad, healthy and sick. Duality, two-ness, two-ness. Or obscurations, their delusions, concepts, beliefs, belief. The, and Jesus teaches in the beginning lessons in the Course of Miracles, because you think you, let's see, what's he say here? I forget. Because you think you think, you think you see. And he says something like you're just image making. You're not seeing anything. You're making images. Those are called projections. And that's called, you. that's in Dzogchen, they call it reflexive radiance, dynamic energy. And in the clarification of terms, Jesus says, mind is the activating agent of spirit. The mind creating, it, creating its energy. He says that, creating its energy. So this mind is forever making and creating. Creating love is really the, well, the only true thing, but we make this other stuff. And then it gets filled. It's animated by the clear light of God's presence, this breath and energy of, of, of um, divine light, this divine light. Um. But these are projections made by the God, clear light, God mind that Jesus is wanting you to release your Buddha Christ nature. But anyway, though this nature is present, we do not recognize it and because our minds are obscured by delusions. When as a result of, of the view, meditation and action, we come to recognize these delusions we can get rid of them in a moment. In one day, sentient beings can be transformed into Buddhas or Christ. Listen to what Jesus is saying. You don't have to take years to do this. <laughs> in one day, this can happen. In a moment, this, when that vital point is tapped and struck by truth of view, meditation, and action, this practice... You can just pop this hard shell open, this armor, this thick, like I call it, cowhide skin, which is darkness, layers of dark, darkness that have filled the skin that stops this clear light that's from radiating out from your heart, your mind, all these light centers, your great ray, your arc of light. But anyway... That light can break out of that thick skin we got here. And then there's just this thin little skin with all this light radiating out of it. Because really that's that's how it is now. Everything is interbeing in all this clear light. Just interbeing. But anyway, we can get rid of these delusions in a moment. In one day, sentient beings can be transformed into Buddhas, Christ. That is the ultimate view, meditation, and action of Dzogchen, D-Z-O-G-C-H-E-N. Such a power of transformation is called striking the vital point. I'm going to read this again. When, as a result of the view, meditation, and action... We come to recognize these delusions when as a result of you, oh, we recognize these delusions, sorry. We can get rid of them in a moment. In one day, sentient beings can be transformed into Buddhas. I put in parentheses, Christ, you know, one and the same. That is the ultimate view, meditation, and action of Dzogchen. Such a power of transformation is called striking the vital point. Um, now, Dzogchen is like A Course in Miracles in that Buddha taught, like Jesus teaches in the Course, 
These are simple thoughts and beliefs that are obscuring your, your Christ nature and that like your Buddha nature. And that's all that's obscuring it. And in essence, this vital point can be tapped and you can wake the heck up in a moment. But it's called swooping from above while climbing from below. Because most of us cannot in a moment or a day wake the heck up. We have relative practices that were like A Course in Miracles Truths, reading Zochen books like letting go of the person you used to be because letting go of this body, this separate self is one of the core delusions that's got to be let go of, tapped on, tap, tap, tap. You got to tap on that core belief that you're a body to let it go. But anyway, so we swoop from above meaning we remember that we're this Christ, Buddha, God, nature, this high truth, as we climb from below practicing truths that we can't believe our thoughts. Thinking about whose thoughts are these anyway? <laughs> who's thinking these thoughts? Who's, what is going, who's doing what around here? Like in baseball, they'd say, who's on first? I mean, who's on first here? Well, Jesus says in the clarification of terms, in the seeming separation, the mind seemed to separate into spirit and ego. Those are the two thought systems. Well, Jesus isn't telling you that you're that thought system other than the Christ Buddha nature is going to take on the virtues of Holy Spirit. But you're the awareness that's aware of those two thought systems. You're not these thoughts. <laughs> we are not these thoughts. We are not these feelings. These are things of the separation. Now, in awakening and enlightenment, you can enjoy the thoughts and the feelings while knowing you're dreaming. That's called lucid dreaming. You're aware you're dreaming while you're dreaming. You enjoy the dream, but you're awake in it. You're alert to it. You're not sleepwalking. You're not thinking you're a body. But anyway, that's the swooping from above while climbing from below. And then you awaken to your this true uh, Buddha nature, Christ nature, God nature. Oh, so anyway, when people are ready... Like I had that Lama Suri Das as a guru. He could transmit a light, vital light that can strike darkness and help me, and it would help me at appropriate times. But what there's there's a couple of times I've read in different books where these holy enlightened beings, when somebody was ready. They would sit in front of that holy guru and he'd have a mirror, like a mirror pointed at the person, the seeker, the, the student or whatever, a mirror. And he'd pour water over the top of the mirror, pour water over that mirror and water would fall. Picture that over the mirror, the front of the mirror. And the seeker sitting over there looking at this, right? When they're ready, what that does is it gets them to realize their mind's pure. It's been washed clean of all these thoughts of separation. That water washed it clean. It's like the clear light of spirit. Just what, And what's left is the pure, clear mirror. This mirror that's so pure and clear that it reflects perfectly whatever shows up in front of it, whatever colors, whatever bodies, whatever images, because this these are projections on this clear light mind, this mirror like mind that's pure, that's pure, but it's dynamic and energetic and it's making these forms, et cetera. But that was that symbolizes what the entire course of miracles and Zochin's trying to do is to help us 
canyon even a moment just purified what they what was the word transform transform in one moment all these layers of unconscious guilt and judgments that are in the unconscious mind poof off the the vital point got struck and it opened to its true nature it's just so beautiful you guys okay well anyway the symbolism of this, because see, we're visualizing that we're this, we, our true nature is this clear light spirit. We're really divine love, unconditional love. God is unconditional love because only in a dream could the children appear to do something stupid as have war and have fight among ourselves. Only in a dream. But God can't stop that dream. It's an unconditional love. The children can sleep. The children can do all this stuff. We have a choice. Which voice are we going to... At the moment the seeming separation occurred, God created Holy Spirit, the voice to call us back home that knows of God and knows of this earthly physical form that we fell asleep into, calling us to awaken from this dream, this hallucination, illusion. It's just sleep. It's a sleep fell over the children but we can awake at any time by these practices of view meditation and action by meditating i i simply have to say if a person doesn't learn to meditate you you won't uh in learning to meditate i'll say it differently you can save your year yourself years of work of trying to wake up because you've got to learn the nature of mind and allow this mind, egoic mind, to be. Allow it to be, because it's never going to stop talking, come and go. But you become awake and alert to having clinging where you're attached to something I want it or pushing things away I don't want it called aversion, attachment or aversion, to, to just lean back and rest just rest and be in this clear light mind that you are. Just rest there. Be there. We're not human doings. We're human beings. Beings. We're being in this clear light. So we've got a couple more minutes here. I'm going to read some more quotes here. True learning is constant. I looked up that word vital. And here's where Jesus said, and true learning is constant and so vital in its power for change that a son of God can recognize his power in one instant and change the world in the next. That's chapter 7, section 5, paragraph 7. The son does not delude himself that he is independent of his source. Chapter 21, section 2, paragraph 12. And now we say amen. For Christ has come to dwell in the abode you set for him before time was in calm eternity. This journey closes, ending at the place where it began. No trace of it remains. Not one illusion is accorded faith. And not one spot. Okay of darkness still remains to hide the face of Christ from anyone. Thy will is done complete and perfectly, and all creation recognizes you and knows you as the only source it has, meaning God presence. Clear in your likeness does the light shine forth from everything that lives and moves in you. This whole universe lives and moves through your heart, that divine heart, that God heart, that clear mind. Because Jesus said, remember, see only this mind everywhere, big M mind, because only this is everywhere. It is everything because it encompasses all things within itself. You are that God mind. You encompass all things. They just come and go on this clear light mind. Anyway, any questions or thoughts at 7.50? Because I have to stop around 7.57 to go to this. Um, I'm doing a lucid dreaming um, workshop. 
Because see, Jesus says in A Course of Miracles, we're serial dreaming. There's daytime dreams. <laughs> then we go to sleep and we're having nighttime dreams. But yet when we sit, wake up in the morning, we sit up in bed, we, we remember that was just a dream. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> but what I'm wanting to do is become lucid even within a nighttime dream to know that I'm dreaming and grasp the fact that I am dreaming to, in order to help all sentient beings wake up from the dream. Because as each of you wake up from the dream, that light that you are radiates out to all the universes, all sentient beings, all the realms. We're doing this not just for ourselves, but for all sentient beings to help them wake up from the dream. Anyway, yes, Barbie, you can unmute yourself. Okay, you mentioned that meditation was from lesson 124. Yes. Was, was the view the same thing? Or I, I heard 134. Or is it the same? Well, one, well, 124, see, on the view, Jesus just doesn't really use the word view. So with your under, what we're developing is an understanding of what Jesus is trying to present to us, which is called, he calls it spiritual sight, but I'm also trying to tie together Zochin and the course and give you another word like view where you look out and you think, what am I, what, what is my view? What am I seeing? What is the view that I'm looking at? And that broadens your view to this 360 degree spacious sky-like spaciousness of clear light, that view. So when you're reading in the, cor in the course, you're thinking about how Je Jesus talks about you will look into this class. See, this is he's talking view, how you look at something and understand the sinless light. And see, that's view of the light, the sinless light, which is pure. And you, uh, you see belongs to you. Okay. Oh, when he's asking you to see Christ's face, that's a view. That's the view that taps on this, all this darkness, tap, tap, tap. What's my view? We have a Christ. I have a Christ face. See, each of us is a unique Christ being. You embody the Christ in your body. You don't have to take on the look of Jesus. That's only done in order to feel the virtues of him when a person hasn't embodied it or felt it, felt it totally in their mind, right? Natural body, natural heart, mind, etc. But anyway, does that help? Because it's yes, how. But yes. Is this from the same lesson, though? 124. Yes. 124. Okay. okay. Thank you. And then I found in that email there's um, view and action are in chapter seven, section five, paragraph one. Because view is, and let your mind shine. Well, that's an action with mind, my, with mind upon all minds. This light will shine back. Well, see, that's a view. Do you visualize or view that light, that clear light comes back to you? See, it's a practice. The light goes, radiates out, but the light comes back. It's always radiating and reabsorbing. It's not stagnant. It's always, a, it's a very living. It's a living force. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And then action is that main forgiveness is chapter 26, V6. Any other, any other th also uh, just comments or thoughts that anyone wants to say while you're gathering that? Let's go around the room and let's practice Jesus's advanced forgiveness. And what that is, we're looking past the body to the clear light of spirit that's here. And we actually silently say, God, and I love you to each person here, like Holy God, Angela, Holy God, Glenda, Holy God, Barbie, Holy God, Chaz, Holy God, Liz, Holy God, Jerry, Holy God, Leon, Holy God, Debbie, Holy God, Julia. And can you, don't you love how Jesus says, you don't have to, you don't even have to think you benefit from this. 
and you will get a benefit. Look, what was that he said? Here, your benefit will not be less if you believe that nothing happens. Picture, we don't feel anything when we're out there silently saying God to all the politicians, the people in the gas line and the grocery store. But it's huge because your program, you're deconditioning the egoic mind to think these holy thoughts and remember what yourself is, God. Everybody's God. There's only the clear light of God. But anyway, it's huge. Anyway, Angela, go ahead. Um, taking <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, am I am I unmuted? Yes. Yes. Um, I just want to add to this. Um, I heard this lately and it um sticks with me. You brought up the mirror tonight and these two little things. Mirror uh perception is a mirror. Perception is not a fact. And it, you know, when you really, um, and mirrors are just, it's a re everything we see is a reflection with, from within. And, um, you know, I really listened, I listened like a little bit to the, uh, you know, as the elections are starting, I'm Canadian. So um, we're just sort of sitting back here, but, you know, I, um, they asked about Trump and they asked about, Kamala Harris and you know the one in what we said here in Windsor is you know what will be will be and there'll be things we're going to like and there's going to be things we're not going to like and um, I just thought I would add to that and um, thank you Glenda for reminding me about the clear light the clear light that we all really are and to um and I, I have always appreciated the advanced forgiveness that I actually learned from you that you um, I had that go quicker in my mind when I was out there um, in relationships. And um, yeah, so I just wanted to and, and I appreciate everything that you teach us about the Buddhism is empty, ha empty mind you come to empty hands. I think there's that one quote. And um, so I just want to thank you tonight. Thanks, Angela. And what you're talking about, see, the clear light mind is like that mirror. It's pure, pure, and it doesn't hold anything. It's letting these thoughts and feelings, perceptions come and go on this clear light mind until we have like in dualism, until we're like Velcro, we put something sticky on that mirror and then we have a sticky object and we let subject and object come together and we're clinging to it. And you, you can feel a, a cling, an attachment. And then a person just lets that go, lets that go to come and go. And then think about who, whatever those images were, if they were people or events as, as Christ, as Buddha, as God. I love you. I love you. I love you. That's the bottom line. That's the purpose of our true purpose is what shows up in front of our face and in my mind to practice this advanced forgiveness on. But the clear light mind is like the mirror. It clearly reflects. You're right. Yeah. But there's a collective mind out there besides the personal karma or personal karma. So in this healing we're healing our personal mind, but there's still going to be collective karma showing up. And even I can make karma today based on if I d have a judgment of somebody of good or bad without recognizing I'm doing that. I take on a thought that darkens my mirror, darkens the clear light, right? Obscures it. Mm -hmm. But now because we're getting wiser we go by our feelings and we recognize, oh, I don't feel peaceful, loving, and joyous. What the heck was I thinking about? What beliefs were I thinking about? What images were I thinking about? Because we've learned with sight or hearing, we take whatever, if I hear something, I can glue thoughts together about it or judgments, they're called, that it's good or bad, 
uh, the color of the birds duller and the bird sound wasn't as crisp as it used to be. And look at sitting on that brown branch and uh, and then we just glue in thoughts together that darken the mirror. We're just not letting the bird come and go and the sound come and go. Now, if I'm, I'm not going to walk out in front of a car. We got there are certain times we got to use ego mind. But you get it. You get it, Angela. We're practicing the, and we can, this is the vital point of our practice, view, meditation, and action can, any one of those practices can tap on obstruct, obstructions to open up to the clear light mind. It's so beautiful what Jesus has done here. Thanks, Angela. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts or comments before I stop the recording? Oh, boy. Okay, I didn't give you all time to practice. Go around the room and practice your advanced forgiveness on every person here. Oh, and let's just add in there all the war zones, Middle East, Ukraine, Africa, the conflict and elections in the United States. Help us, help us, Holy Spirit, Jesus, Buddha, enlightened beings. Spread your light of peace and calmness throughout all the realms of peace. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Sorry I can't stay tonight and have us chat. Normally I stay and we chat for 15, 30 minutes, but I'm, I need to go to this other Zoom. It's Andrew Holacek's Dream Yoga. Yoga means union. And what I'm wanting to do is have lucid dreaming at night, meaning I'm, a, I'm aware that I'm dreaming while I'm dreaming because during the day, I'm getting more and more lucid to be awake that I'm aware that I'm dreaming during the day because that's the whole course of miracles. We've made up a dream here. We're sleepwalking in thinking all this and we're practicing this. Thank you. Thank you. I love you all. Thank you for coming out tonight. I greatly appreciate every one of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The synergy and love that you all admit is fabulous and people feel it when they go listen to this YouTube video later. It's just beautiful, just beautiful. I'm going to stop recording.